Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and screw it. I just decided to record episode three now because I'm like, all right, it's it's only 10.30, uh, and so I got enough time to record one more and then start editing episode one and posting it up for you guys uh, tomorrow morning. If you haven't seen episode three yet of Trisse, please turn away now. We're going to talk about spoilers because I'm basically going to go through the beats of this episode, tell you what I liked. You know, if I mention anything I don't like, I'll mention that too, and kind of tell you my overall feeling of the show, the characters, and what I'm liking because uh, this episode I felt was more character driven and so I really like this episode. Uh, this episode was directed by David Hartman who's another very talented director and working in animation and I'm very happy that he did this episode because I felt like this one was more character driven. You learn more about the flashback story which we'll get into and you see more of the relationship with Alexandra and her co-workers like the two familiars and also you learn a little bit more about Hank and you see more of his personality in this episode so I really liked that too because this felt like a little bit like a Hank episode and I wasn't expecting that, and I wasn't expecting to like that. So when it started happening, I was like, oh, is this going to be focused on that guy a little bit? And I was like, I don't know if I like that. And then by the end, I actually really liked it um, because he doesn't take away from Alexandra's story, but he does have a nice little story in this episode. So I found that cool. So if you don't want spoilers for episode three, turn away now, go watch the episode on Netflix, and then come back after you see it, and we will talk about you know, if I miss anything, mispronounce anything, whatever it is, let me know down in the comments and we'll talk about spoilers and other things down there if I skip over anything because I might edit some stuff out. Some of these are running a little long and I might edit them down so I might accident or purposely cut stuff out that I wanted to say and we can talk more about it in the comments for sure. Um, so this episode, episode three, starts off again in black and white and I explained why I like that in the last episode. We talked about how the first episode, her flashback with her mom was in color, but now that her mom is dead, and she's working with her dad, learning about the occult and all these things, and become and training to be the next Lacan. She is, uh, she, you know, she sees her memories are in black and white. The world is a little bit um, less. There's a lot less color in it without her mom, and so I really liked that approach. We also learn more about the Electra lady, the one who looks like Electra, um, uh, who is like going around killing all these military men. You find out that she actually um, was told by a group of military men, of this specific group of military men, to uh, kill her um, fellow soldiers or like, you know, uh, other people in her group or unit. And so now what she's doing is she's basically coming back to get revenge on all them and cutting their hearts out. And you think she's just getting simple revenge, but it turns out she needs those hearts to cast and summon, you know, something. She has now resurrected her husband through this last general, the guy who made her kill her unit now that she's killed all of his unit and took all their hearts, she brainwashed or hypnotized these other people and they all cut their throats, bled on this general guy. He, she feeds them the hearts or something like that and uh, uses the hearts to help the ceremony. And then the general guy, the last person on her list to kill, his head gets ripped off and a, and a being grows out of him and turns into her husband but adorned in like these, this crown and like all these like garments and stuff like that. And she's like, you know, my beloved, is that you? And he's like, yes, you've resurrected me. And then, but it's clearly not just her husband. There's something else going on there. He's like, he's also a demon or something because then he turns on her. And then that's where the opening of the episode ends is her standing with her kids. And they're like, wait, what's going on? And the husband descends on them to attack. And she pulls out her weapons and she's like, no, this is not why I resurrected you. And he's like, uh, you know, like, you know, I'm going to eat the children and then I'm going to eat you. And then it cuts to the opening. And then we find out, you know, the episode directed by David Hartman. And then it goes into the modern day stuff. So, yeah, I, I dug this episode. I thought this was another one like episode two where it was um, it was a lot more balanced. This one has pretty much one major story it's focusing on besides the flashback. Um, it's kind of focusing on this actress and kind of her story. It starts off with a different person being killed, a woman like walking in a parking garage getting killed, and but you find out she's connected to this actress. And this actress is being guarded over uh, by this creature, like who's kind of like a tree creature, and he's like a little gnome looking creature. And he's, you know, hanging out on this tree golem and I guess it shows this girl and it's trying to get involved, you know, because some of these demons are involved in politics and mayors, like in the first episode, and others are involved in other industries that are, you know, help uh, the world, or your crime and all that stuff, or not help the world, but are part of our world, like crime and, you know, and gangsters and stuff. And now this one is, has it, its interest and in, has invested in a human actress um, who has some kind of sin in her past, apparently, that we're going to learn about. And this actress is very famous. 
And it turns out Hank, uh, you know, who hangs out, the bartender who hangs out with Alexandra, he's a big fanboy of this actress. So uh, so that leads to some fun. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. But um, so Alexandra's like, okay, there, there is something. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to look more into it. Um, and also the, the woman who gets killed in the garage, who was her last phone call? And they looked and they see, actually, she goes and tracks down a ghost hacker. Uh, and there's literally a, like a fat dude, uh, like a fat nerdy guy ghost sitting in a room hacking into stuff and they're like and she goes and visits him and says hey uh, i'm gonna chop your hand off with my mystical knife if you don't uh you know hack into this computer or the, into her phone and tell me who the last person that the woman in the the you know garage called and they find out it's this famous actress and that's when hank steps up and goes what oh my god i'm such a fan like oh uh, you know but like respectful i'm not like a creepy fan or anything you know and he has some like humor there and i really like that i thought that was played really well um and then uh but meanwhile the ghost hacker guy he's playing like some video game and the twins are like hey is that you know is that the new game it's, it doesn't come out for like another six months or something and he's like bro no man he's like that new game yeah it comes out in six months i'm playing the one they're already working on that's coming out in three years <laughs> he's like i already hacked into that you know that company that makes that video game so it's like there's some fun banter there but again i think that it, it kind of reveals more about the characters it's not just that it's a, a humor scene even if the humor doesn't work for you it still is a window into these characters who for the most part, um, have kind of been a little uh, bland at times, uh, you know, uh, except for a few moments here and there. Like first episode was all set up. Second episode, you got a little bit more humor with the twin brothers uh, when they hooked up with the the, the, the wood girls, you know, the, 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 the ghost girls. Um, they hooked up with them. So you got a little bit more humor with that at the end where they're like, I feel objectified. Um, but this one, you start to see more and more of that. So I, I like that because you, if you're going to have Alexandra be the straight man and be the stoic one, it's good to have a little bit of levity with her sidekicks. Not a ton, but enough to where it breaks up the monotony of stuff. So I, I did like that. Um, they find the actress. They're like, okay, we're going to go to the set where she's filming, and we're going to talk to her. And so they go. Her name, I think, originally was Maria, but she changed it to Nova because she's like, you know, a famous actress now, so that's her stage name. And so they go visit her at the ABC ZNN uh, studios or whatever, And uh, which I don't know if that's a real place or not, but it was just a funny little detail that I just wrote down. Um and, uh, and while they're going to see her, uh, Hank is actually put on a nice suit and he sprayed cologne on <laughs> and everything. I thought that was pretty funny. And the others are like, dude, come on, that's too much cologne. He's like, is it? Oh man, you think she'll hate it? And they're like, I thought you weren't a creepy fan. He's like, I'm not, I'm just, I wanna make a good impression. So I thought that was pretty funny. So, uh, so when they show up though, there's like this tree golem thing called Among Paso. And it's, a, it's a, like an elder uh, leader of the tribe of the red earth. And that's the being that um, has influence over this actress and helped her, I guess, build her career or something. But it's hiding some secret. And so normally humans make deals with these things, uh, but they, normally they don't get involved with like famous people. But I guess that's maybe how this woman became famous was she was at a crossroads at one point and maybe having this, you know, guardian angel uh, tribe of the Red Earth thing watching over her. Maybe that's, you know, ultimately what helped her, you know, continue her success on top of her acting chops. Um, and you find out that she's actually a very good actress because she's hiding a very horrendous secret um, that gets revealed as the episode goes on. So you find out that the creature that's killed the woman in the garage is also coming after the actress. And the creature is like this little monster uh, that is like, a, it's like a baby monster called a, a Shanik, I think it is. Um, it's spelled T-I-Y-A-N-I-K. But I think they pronounce it in the show, at least, as Shonik uh, or Chanik. Um, and it's like this little baby monster with, like, you know, bone spider legs or something coming out of its back. And uh, and you find out that it it's, like, making all these sounds. And the actress is like, I haven't heard those noises in years. Like, uh, my grandma used to whisper something to me, and it reminds me of that. And then sh she comes face to face, like, uh, you know, Hank is trying to protect her. And so is Alexandra, and she's trying to get answers, and they're, and they're trying to find these this little creature. And it gets past all of them, and it leads um, Nova, the actress, out, you know, to a warehouse to confront it, um, where they're, like, all the lighting gear is and stuff, where they're filming. And uh, and so the little baby thing comes up, the, the Chanik comes up to uh, Nova, and reveals itself and then its hands go from claws back into like baby hands and the spider legs go back into its back and its face is like mangled but it's trying to like heal and it's like holding its arms open and it's you know uh basically walking towards her like she's its mother and at first i thought it it was, I was like is she is that her baby like what is that um 
turns out it's, it wasn't a baby, uh, like her baby, but it does represent that. Uh, like I always like that in Silent Hill where some of the monsters represent something about you, like a, like some kind of fear you have or or maybe a phobia you have or or like some kind of dark secret you're holding back um, or like some fetish you have. Like all of those things were like in Silent Hill where the monsters represented like James in Silent Hill 2 represented his subconscious. And so he would see like sexy nurses, monsters and, you know, and all these other things. And Angela would see like a, a guy like under bed sheets because it was like a creepy thing of her past and stuff. So I was... I was thinking of that when I when this baby walked up to her, I was like, oh, is that her baby? Or is it just like, that's just how these things look. And it, it's using that to like uh, elicit a memory of hers, you know, because that's her sin that she's hiding is the, is the fact that um, she had, the woman in the garage was like a psychiatrist who works with celebrities. And apparently this actress paid that psychiatrist to dump her, the her, Nova, the, the actress, she had a baby out of wedlock. And that would be seen as a big no-no in their culture, I guess, uh, that she has a baby without a husband. So she paid the psychiatrist lady to go leave the baby out in the woods, um, which I just think is so monstrous. I'm like, go give the baby away or go leave it at like a, you know, like a, a church or something where someone will take care of it. Like, uh, or, you know, or leave it at an orphanage or somewhere, like leave it somewhere where someone will, you know, knock on the door, like do that whole thing. But she paid that woman to go leave the baby in the woods. So the sounds that Nova hears, the actress, are the sounds of the baby crying um, out in the woods. And then she, when she comes near the Chonic monster, uh, Hank looks down and notices his knife is missing. And that's when he looks up at uh, Nova and he's like, no, don't do it. And Nova pulls out the knife. She took it from Hank because, you know, he was being kind of flirty and trying to be like an alpha male around her. And he got close to her. So she took his knife and she used it to kill the Chonic um, and, uh, and, you know, just kill it stab it like a hundred times it's really brutal um and you find out that you know she's been hiding the secret and that she got rid of a baby and we don't i don't think we know the fate of the baby either um but it's yeah it's still like really monstrous of her and then she kills this jonic and that's when alexander shows up and goes and hank and they're like trying to they stop her and they're like do you know what you've just done you've killed an innocent jonic and he's like this thing was and she's like, what do you mean innocent? It killed, you know, so in, you know, my friend in, in the parking garage. And it's like, yes, because you did a horrible thing. You committed a sin. And its job is to like, you know, that's its job. That that creature's job is to like uh, enact, you know, some kind of revenge or something. Or, you know, it's a ghost. It's a monster. So, it, uh, you know, it needed to kill that woman who you paid to dump a baby in the woods. And it needed to kill you to like right the wrong. And, and you just stop that by killing it. Um, and so now you've just upset the balance. So, so Alexandra's like, so I can't protect you. What's going to happen next? And, you know, and Nova's like, well, I'm a great actress. And none of you even knew I did that with a baby. And like, I got rid of my baby and, and the world doesn't know. And she's like, so I'll be fine. So, uh, so Alexandra's like, you better hope that's true. She goes, because you just killed a Jonic and you know, the rest of the Jonics aren't going to be happy. Um, and then, you know, Alexandra says, and you among uh, Paso, the tree gnome guy, you know, you're a accomplice so this is this is not good so um so alexandra then goes and summons her skull creature from the first episode where she brought death into the room she summons that and they send the dead shanik to the afterlife and um and then the episode ends with nova sitting in her bed looking on social media at all of you know all the news outlets that are like oh you know her new tv episode came out and that's get her that's going to get her a role in this new big movie and her career is just going to keep going up and keep going up and so nova's like yep yeah, no one's ever going to know like you know i i got away with it and um and uh and i just killed the monster that came to get me so i'll be fine and then that's when her lights flicker on and off and that's when uh, a bunch of chonic you know other baby monsters descend they come out of her vents and come out from under her bed come out through you know break in through the window and, and they just descend on her and and kill her and claim her life um so and that's where the episode ends, which i thought was very different in the first two episodes where they end with alexandra kind of going all right you know that there's another case you know where i got threatened and you know more is to come this one ended on like a horror note where it was like uh you know the bad person got their comeuppance <laughs> in a way they didn't end with alexander they ended with nova um you know and who then gets killed at the end so i kind of like that because it was more horror it felt more like a horror show like an episode of like tales from the crypt or something like that uh where you know the person gets their comeuppance at the end so all that stuff i really liked a nuno popped up for like one or two scenes so that was kind of neat introducing the uh among paso uh you know tree gnome creature guy that was another new monster that we haven't seen before so again like 
building the world, but still telling like these small personal stories. I really like that contrast, and I think that's very key for world building to have small personal stuff at the center and have the, you know and have the world get larger each episode, you know, growing from there. Because now we've learned about a dozen different monster types in three episodes without it feeling too overwhelming or cramped, you know, crammed in. So, uh, so I dig it. So this episode, again, another one that I really like. So if there's anything in this episode I missed or didn't go over in detail that you wanted me to talk about more, let me know down below because I might edit these and chop them down a little bit, make them a little less because they're, you know, these are running about like 25, 30 minutes, you know, as I record them, but I'll probably edit them down to closer to like 10 or 15 minutes. So there might be some stuff I cut out. So if so, you know, let me know down below if there's something you think I missed out on, we can talk about it down in the comments, but also let me know your review of this episode in the comments down below and we'll get to episodes four five and six soon i haven't watched them yet so try not to put any spoilers of those down in the comments um just wait for my reviews of four five and six to go up um hopefully over the weekend um maybe this time next week at the latest and i'll try to get them out to you one two three again just like we did these ones and i'd love to hear your thoughts about those episodes in those episodes so let me know what you thought of episode three down below and we'll keep talking down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you all in the future peace